faith, faith is, is unseen, unseen but, but felt. felt. Faith, faith is strength, strength when, we, when feel we feel we have none. none. Faith, faith is hope, is hope when, when all seems, seems lost. lost. Food for Soul and Goa co-working present today's readings and reflection. August 7th, 2022, 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The night of the Passover was known beforehand to our fathers, that with sure knowledge of the oaths in which they put their faith, they might have courage. Your people awaited the salvation of the just and the destruction of their foes. For when you punished our adversaries, in this you glorified us whom you had summoned. For in secret the holy children of the good were offering sacrifice and putting into effect with one accord the divine institution. The Word of the Lord Exalt you just in the Lord, praise from the upright is fitting. Bless the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen for his own inheritance. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Because of it, the ancients were well attested. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he sojourned in the promised land as in a foreign country dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and maker is God. By faith he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile. For he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. All these died in faith. They did not receive what had been promised, but saw it and greeted it from afar, 
and acknowledge themselves to be strangers and aliens on earth, for those who speak thus show that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had come, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better homeland, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac, descendant shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia! Stay awake and be ready, for you do not know on what day your Lord will come, Alleluia, Alleluia! A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward, whom the master will put in charge of his servants, to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly, I say to you, the master will put the servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, My master is delayed in coming, and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants, to eat and drink and get drunk. Then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour, and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will, but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will, shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating, shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection on today's readings by Bob We are reminded today of various aspects of faith. The first reading describes the faith that the patriarchs and the Israelites have, a faith in the promise that they will be set free from their enslavement in Egypt. The psalm is a prayer of faithful believers who realize that they are blessed because they have been chosen by God. The letter to the Hebrews is a review of part of Hebrew scriptures and shows how the faith of Abraham moved him to follow God's command even though he did not understand all the ramifications of his actions. In the Gospel, Jesus uses parables to highlight another aspect of faith, the importance of being prepared. The passage from the Book of Wisdom relates the faith that Abraham and his descendants have. God has promised that the children of Israel will possess the promised land. Even while being slaves in Egypt, the Israelites believe that God will make good on the divine promises. Their faith gives them hope while they await God's deliverance of them, allowing them to return to the land of promise. 
The psalmist recalls that God has chosen the people to be the people of divine inheritance. Because God has promised to do good for the chosen people, they can wait for the Lord with faith and hope. The selection from the letter to the Hebrews describes faith, not so much in the sense of theological definition, but by using the example from the life of Abraham. Abraham is truly the father of faith in the sense that he is the first to completely trust in God's promises. Abraham is willing to forsake his homeland and move out to a new land. He believes God's promise that not only will he possess a land of promise, but that he will have many descendants who will live in the land. That takes a lot of faith on Abraham's part, especially as he owns no land and he grows older without a child being born from his apparently barren wife, Sarah. And even after the aged couple give birth to Isaac, Abraham trusts in God when he is asked to sacrifice his son, Isaac, the one through whom he is to have many descendants. In the Gospel, Jesus teaches about the need for preparedness as his disciples await for the fulfillment of the reign of God. They have been promised a place in the future reign of heaven, but in the meantime, they must act as if the rain will be coming immediately, and in fact is already here. They are to live in the already but not yet. They are already part of the reign of God right now and must act accordingly, even if they do not yet fully experience the totality of it. As I reflect on the reading, I am reminded of a phrase I use when I am working on youth retreats, participate don't anticipate. The retreat ants always wanted to know what was in store for them. The retreat team had promised them that they would have a special experience while on the retreat. Some of the youth wanted to know what was going to happen next. We had to reassure them that they were already a part of the process of what was going to happen and they should not anticipate what was going to happen but just participate in what was happening right then, for their whole time on retreat was part of the process of the experience we had promised them. In life, we believers are anxious about the promises God has made to us. We believe in what the Lord Jesus has told us about the reign of God, but we want to know the details of what is going to happen next. We anticipate the future without participating in the present. We want the Master to return, but we don't want to have to prepare for His return by doing what is expected of us right now. Faith, as the author of the letter to the Hebrews writes, is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11 verse 1. It means we live in the already, but not yet, reign of God. We have the confidence, literally, with faith, to fully be in the present moment while we know that there is still more God will be giving us in the future. We are part of the process of God renewing the world right now as we proclaim the good news to those around us by the way we live our lives. We, like Abraham, move forward, not knowing all the details of how God is going to work it out but we are sure that God has a plan for us. A plan which we do not fully comprehend at this point in our lives. We live with the assurance that God is going to work it out as we participate in what God is asking us to do right here and right now. We live as members of the reign of God which is, already but not yet, Another way of saying this is that we fully engage ourselves in witnessing the coming reign of God by our acts of service to others without worrying about all the details of how God is going to bring it about. We completely give ourselves to the spread of the good news and trust that God will give us what we need on a need-to-know basis. Another comparison comes to mind. In the planning for D-Day in World War II, the Allied soldiers knew that something big was going to happen. They did not know exactly all the details and they were not told when it would happen. 
They trained and they had to be ready for the time when the orders would be given. Even when the orders to move out were given, they were not given all the details. They had to go forward with faith in the plan that had been worked out by those in authority. Some of them knew that they would probably have to suffer and even die, but they were willing to commit themselves to the plan, even though they did not know fully what the plan was. God is asking us to commit ourselves, our whole mind, our whole body, our whole soul, to the divine plan. God has promised us the ultimate victory and being part of the eternal reign. All we need do is prepare ourselves and do what we must do right here and right now. We should not worry and anxiously anticipate what is ahead of us on our way to the final end, but we should be willing to do what is asked of us right now, proclaim the good news to those who are around us and live out our call as disciples of the Lord Jesus. We must fully participate in the already part of the reign of God and not anxiously anticipate the not yet aspect of the reign of God. That is what faith is. That is the faith we are called to profess by our very existence. That is the faith which our God has given to us and will fulfill according to the promises made in and through Jesus. Let us, together with the psalmist, proclaim, Blessed are the people the Lord has chosen to be God's own, the personal question or action for today. How do I live a faith-filled life? Do I overly anticipate with undue anxiety what lies ahead? Do I participate as fully as possible to bring about the reign of God? In what ways can I be a more active participant in the process of bringing about the already, but not yet, reign of God? How can I help bolster the faith of those with whom I journey on the path toward the reign of God? Let us pray, Blessed are you, Lord God, fulfiller of the promises you have made. Through your goodness, you give the gift of faith to your people and ask them to respond by following your plan. You have sent your Son, Jesus, as the model of being faithful to your plan. He lived, ministered, suffered, and died so that your reign could be brought about. He invited his followers to be a part of the process of announcing the reign of heaven which was already with them but not yet fully realized until his return at the end of time. For the times we have failed to participate in the process of living out your plan, we seek your pardon and forgiveness. Continue to empower us by the presence of your Holy Spirit so that we can fully commit ourselves to your reign even when we do not know all the details. We look forward to the ultimate celebration which Jesus has prepared for us through his suffering, death, and resurrection and it is in his name that we lift up this prayer of praise and thanks to you, for he is our Master Teacher, Lord and Savior, and he is living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen. Presented by Father Frankie Fernandez OFM Capuchin Justice Peace Integrity Creation JPIC Capuchin Goa